Is that is this mic? Baptist Church, and in the very beginning when I first got there in, uh, in Texas, I had to be careful not to say Bible Baptist Church, so if I say the wrong thing at some point, you guys got to give me a little bit of grace. Um, we've been, uh, past, Pastor Cuso, you'll notice, is not here. He's, he's playing hooky tonight. I'm just kidding. He's not playing hooky tonight. He's at the summit. Daniel and I actually just came back from the North, Northeast Vision Summit at uh, Solid Rock Baptist Church in Berlin. It's been really, it's been a really uh, challenging and, and fun time. We've been, I've been churching for the last like uh, almost 24 hours now, and uh, and it's awesome. I'll, I'll tell you uh, just a, a quick story. Today, we uh, the men, we kind of separated the men from the from the women. The women had a, a lesson for themselves. The the men went outside in the heat under the big tent, and a. Uh, I want to say uh, it was an 87-year-old uh, pastor who's been pastoring for over 60 years. He was giving a lesson to, to a group of like 100 and something pastors on staying faithful in the ministry, staying faithful in the ministry. And uh, this, this particular year has been very, very trying, I think, for pastors. A lot of people uh, falling, out of the, falling out of the ministry, kind of giving it up. It's been very stressful. Um, but it was it was it was awesome for me to listen to this man who's been who spent his entire adult life uh, as a pastor telling other pastors, hey, you know all those things you preach about God's faithfulness. I'm here to tell you that they're true. That I have been I have been through it. Uh, he said uh, he said he is not done uh, running his race. But he's run quite a good bit of it. And, and, and it's true. It's all, it's all true. So that was, that was encouragement to me. And I'm looking forward. We're going to be heading back up there after, after church tonight. I'm looking forward to seeing what else God has for us up there. And I'm sure Pastor will come back and give a, a big, long report of everything that we went through as well. But we're going to start off like we normally do with a, with a hymn. And it's number 215 if you have a hymnal. And why don't you go ahead and stand with me. And we'll sing all three verses. We have an anchor. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? When the clouds unfold their wings of strife, when the strong tides lift the cable strain, will your anchor drift or firm remain? We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll fastened to the rock which cannot move grounded firm and deep in the savior's love it is safely more twill the storms withstand for twist Cured by the Savior's hand, though the tempest rage and the wild winds blow, not an angry wave our bark or flow. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Fastened to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. On that last, when our eyes behold through the gathering night, the city of gold, our harbor bright, we shall anchor fast by the heavenly shore with the storms all past forevermore. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll. Passion to the rock which cannot move, grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we're so thankful to be here tonight, Lord. We're thankful for this place you've given us, and I'm thankful for each of these people who are here tonight, who could be anywhere on a Wednesday night, but they're here in your house to, to, to worship you, Lord. 
to hear from you, Lord. We ask for your blessing upon the proceedings here tonight. Everything that comes and goes in this room, Lord, all the words spoken from here, Lord, I just pray that you would give Brother Sharif the words to speak tonight that would, that would hit the hearts of your people, Lord, that would, uh, that would poke us and prick us in the ways that you would have us, Lord, that, uh, that we'd be receptive to, to your Spirit's guiding tonight and leading all the way through us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. You may be seated. If the uh, ushers will prepare to receive the offering, We'll sing another hymn together. What a friend we have in Jesus. You know, there's a lot of, uh, I'll call them little G gods out there that are, uh, that are looking for your, for your heart and are looking for your, for your worship. But we, have a, we have a God that, that, that calls himself our friend. It's a, it's a precious relationship we have with, with Jesus. It's something that no, no other religion can, can say. And it's a wonderful thing. We'll sing all three verses of what a friend we have in Jesus. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we do not care. Everything to God in prayer. Have we trials and temptations? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Can we find a friend so faithful who will all our sorrow share? Jesus knows our every weakness. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Are we weak and heavy laid? with a load of care precious Savior still our refuge take it to the Lord in prayer do thy friends despise forsake thee take it to the Lord in take and shield thee. Thou wilt find a solace there. Amen. Well, I won't belabor this any longer. For those of you who haven't uh, heard uh, Brother Sharif uh, preach, or, is there anybody in here who hasn't heard Brother Sharif preach before? A, a, a few. Okay, good. Good. So uh, he was gracious enough to to come all the way here to uh, to share the word with us, since Pastor was gonna was gonna be out, um, and so I'm excited to be back. It's been so long since I've gotten to gotten to hear him, so I'm I'm excited to have him. Uh, Brother Sharif was here with us when we were when we were trying to raise funds just to build this building, and so it's actually been a, a pretty big blessing for me as they go to the summit. I get to meet with a lot of people who who not only were were helping us in the background in prayer but financially to build this place and they'll they'll come to to come to us and just encourage us and say hey listen you know we're still praying for you guys we're still praying for everything that's going on down down there at Bible Baptist Church it's been a it's been a pleasure for me I'm 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 I've been uh I've been encouraged by the last couple of days um and so it's good to have you good to have you back brother Sharif I'll I'll get out of the way and let you get up here <laughs>
How about now? There we go. How many of you heard the feedback just a little bit at the beginning of the service? Did you hear that? <laughs> so I said, as I walked into the men's restroom, I said, the question is, is this thing really off? <laughs> That's what I was going to say, and it wasn't. I never trust uh, these microphones, and so uh, it, it really wasn't off. And so, praise the Lord, we caught that in time, because uh, there's some gross stuff that happens in the men's restroom. No bathroom humor. Don't take it there. You're going to ruin church. Okay, let's keep it clean. Let's keep it, you know, godly. Here we go. <laughs> let's turn our Bibles to Matthew chapter 11. And I'm really glad that your pastor gets to be at the meeting tonight. Pastors need refreshment. Did you ever think about this? Did you ever wonder why the Bible says that? The Bible talks about a pastor's worthy of double honor. And uh, I don't think that anybody would really question that that's talking about pay. The Bible talks about muzzle not the ox while he treadeth, and that the pastor is worthy of double honor. It doesn't mean that the pastor always gets that, but it, it does say that he's worthy of it. It does say that. Um, if the laborer is worthy of his hire, and he's also worthy of double honor, I would just think that maybe the math there means that a pastor's working uh, twice as hard as most people. All right, well, that's not like a prideful thing or anything like that. I will tell you that a pastor's office hours, just in case you were wondering, are 24-7. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I'll prove it to you. When you want to talk to the pastor, you don't take off from work like you do a dentist. How many of you know what I'm talking about? You take off from work or you take off from school when you go to see the dentist. You don't do that with the pastor. You call him. If it's 2 o'clock in the morning and, and you have to call the pastor, you will. I mean, if there's a death in the family or an emergency, and guess what? Your pastor would be there, wouldn't he? I know. I, guess what? I know I can call your pastor at any time of the day. And pretty much, pretty much, unless he's helping somebody else or he's so in a coma sleeping, <laughs> he's going to answer my call. And I needed to talk to him the other night, and he was on the phone with me until like 12.30 at night. And so uh, pastors do need some refreshment. Uh, pastors need a pastor. Pastors need refreshment. Pastors need time off. Listen, I was a, my family's in the bread distribution business, and uh, we distribute Thomas, Arnold, and uh, how many of you know Thomas's Bagels and English Muffins? You know those? Yeah. My dad delivers those. He has, owns distribution in South Jersey, and he owns a couple of Tasty Cake routes in Philadelphia. If the bread man gets four or five weeks vacation, then I think the pastor deserves some time away. Listen, that's not in the message. I just felt like saying that. Is that okay? I hope I have a little bit of liberty to say that. And that's, that's my opinion, and uh, I hope that doesn't hair lip anybody or offend anybody tonight. I do love your pastor, and uh, he is a dear friend of mine. And so anyway, I guess I'll just get to the preaching. Amen. So we almost had, we almost had uh, an, an incident there in the bathroom, but fortunately we caught the mic in time. I'm always excited uh, when somebody asks, how many of you heard Brother Sharif before? And then hands go up that you haven't heard. That's exciting. You know, it's your first time. And... Uh, I don't know. It's, it's always fun to have somebody uh, just not know. First of all, when you hear the name Sharif, who's this guy named Sharif? What? He doesn't look like a Sharif, which is wildly racist. What's a Sharif supposed to look like? I know that's what half of you are thinking. He don't look like a Sharif. Should I be waving an AK-47 in the air? Say, la, 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 la. Is that what Sharif looks like? That's my insecurity. I know you weren't thinking it. That's just my insecurity. It's okay. I am Egyptian. My father is from Egypt. Pray for my folks. They're in Egypt right now. Right now they're there for about five and a half weeks. Would you pray for them that they have a safe trip um, and good health? Pray for my dad to get saved. I preached a few weeks ago over in Haynesport, New Jersey, and my Muslim father came out to hear me. What a huge, huge blessing that was. Um, and 
we were just praying for him to get saved. So, but the fact that he would even come and hear me preach is pretty amazing. That's a miracle, don't you think? All right, let's go to the scriptures. We're going to look at Matthew chapter 11. If you're there, let me hear you say amen. amen. If you love Jesus, say amen. amen. All right, Matthew chapter 11, verse 15. The Bible says, And he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Heavenly Father, we thank you this day for your word. Lord, without it, where would we be? I'm so thankful that we don't have to make it up. We don't have to pretend. We don't have to fake it. Lord, you've given us what you want us to know. And thank you for this book, Lord. I pray that you'd fill me with your Holy Spirit tonight as I preach your word. Lord, if I thought that I had to do this without you, I would, I would quit. I don't want to do this without you. I would hate to do this without you. Lord, how can I preach a perfect book without your power. Lord, please fill me with your Holy Spirit. Lord, I pray that you'd fill each and every listener here tonight with your Holy Spirit, that would, they would not just be hearers of your word, but they would be doers also. Lord, we need you here tonight. Lord, I pray that you would be with Pastor Cuzo, that he's at Summit. Lord, help him to get a blessing. Lord, would you refresh his spirit? Please, in Jesus' name, amen. Matthew chapter 11, verse 15, the Bible says, He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. And this is something that the Lord Jesus says a couple times in his earthly ministry. Uh, we're told, hey, listen, pay attention. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. I wonder why he says it so much. It's probably not because we're so good at it, right? <laughs> It's pretty neat when our kids start to learn how to talk. I think that's one of the neatest things in the world. Kids do say the craziest things. Just the other day, my daughter Livy, who is three years old, about to turn four, she told me that, I asked her, I said, when are you going to potty train? I mean, if they're talking to you when you're changing a diaper, they, they need to be potty trained, in my opinion. If they can hold a full conversation with you, it's time to be potty trained Okay, enough with this, Olivia. When are you going to use the potty? She said, when I'm four, I'm going to use the potty. She thinks that that's the magic. When I turn four, I'm going to use the potty. And, uh, but she says the craziest things. We were out on the porch the other day, and Olivia, that's our youngest out of four, she says to me, I need chocolate milk. And I said, okay, we don't have chocolate milk. She said, oh, we don't have chocolate milk. I said, no, we don't have chocolate milk. She goes, we need to get some right now. She's three and a half. I mean, to me, it is awesome. Like, listen, when kids are learning to talk, that is a really, really neat time, I, I think. I, I love it. I, I enjoy speaking to children. Then they start to talk too much, you know what I mean? Then they go through the teenage years, and then they don't talk to you again, I guess. I haven't been there yet, but I do remember being that uh, person where I didn't talk as much, and I'm sure that'll be exciting. You have to talk to me. I pay the bills. And uh, can I just ask a quick question? You know, some of you who do know me, you know I'm a little ADHD. Why is there a phone number here? What's the number? Oh, oh, for like offerings and stuff? I thought it was like just in case, you know, you needed tech support for the pulpit. I knew you guys were getting tacky and everything, but I could not figure out what is the number for, and I couldn't, I promise you, I could not preach another word until I knew, until I knew what that number was for. I promise you, I was, I was getting stuck about 10 times. It screamed at me, there's a phone number here. Is that for tech support? I could not imagine why there's a phone number here. Okay, fair enough. Now I know. <laughs> All right, so I was saying, it is neat. Listen, it's neat when our children are learning to talk. Isn't that a neat thing? I love that. I love, to, I love it when they're learning to say things and, and learning new words. I said something to my kids the other day, and they're like, what does that mean? And I gave them another definition, and they're like, what does that mean? I'm like, apparently, you're too young to learn what that word means. And I was getting frustrated. But they're learning to talk, and they're learning new words, and they're learning a vocabulary, and they're learning uh, how to say things. And kids crack me up sometimes. But you know what? They don't just need to learn how to talk. They need to learn how to listen. You know what's amazing? 
is that some people go through life and they never learn to listen. It's something we need to learn. It is not innate in us. We love to hear the sound of our own voice. It's strange. As much of a challenge it is to learn how to listen, it's even harder to learn how. It's a greater challenge to learn how to listen to God. It's a bigger challenge. Many assume that God is mute just because they're deaf to the sound of his voice. But I assure you when I promise you that God has plenty to say. You know, I've said this before. I don't know if I've said it here. The word of God is every, every, everything that God wants us to know. It's not everything that he knows, obviously. He knows a lot more than that. But it's definitely everything he wanted us to know. We just don't always listen. But God certainly has a lot to say. If we would only learn to listen. So let's take some lessons tonight on how to listen to God. How to listen to God. First of all, lesson number one, let him talk. Let him talk. In Matthew chapter 17, would you turn there with me? Matthew chapter 17. This is the Mount of Transfiguration where he takes Peter, James, and John up into the mountain, up into the high place. In verse 1, the Bible says, in Matthew chapter 17, verse 1, the Bible says, And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth up into a high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them. And his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias, talking with him. Then answered Peter and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Elias, Elias. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. So I love Peter, I really do. He gets dissed a lot because he's a lot like us, quite frankly, right? Everything Peter gets dissed for is because we're just like him in these areas. And uh, uh, the truth, we'll like diss on him because he got out of the boat and sank, yet he's the only one who got out of the boat and tried to walk on water. Amen. And he's the only one other than Jesus who actually did walk on water, right? So we rag on Peter every once in a while, we bust on him a little bit, uh, because Peter had a propensity to say things and speak quickly and maybe just, just I don't know, make him, make us, he was a little silly sometimes, right? But so are we. Praise God, our story is not in the Bible. I mean, I'm so glad, just like there's a book of Jonah, I'm so glad there isn't a book of Sharif in the Bible that tells all of my things and all of my weaknesses, right? Well, so Peter is here. Peter, James, and John, they're up there. And Peter says, it is good for us to be here. Now, that, that is great that he was able to recognize how great that was to be there. Peter, James, and John being taken apart by Jesus up into this high place to meet Moses and Elias. Wow. They're having a conference with their heavenly father. It was good for them to be there. And then he just starts to talk. Let's build a tabernacle, one for you, and one for Moses, and one for Elias. Calm down, Peter. Calm down. The Bible says, while he yet spake, while he yet spake, he's interrupted by the Lord, and the Lord says, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. Peter, hey, listen, quiet. It is good for you to be here. It's good for you to be here and listen. Pay attention. You don't have to be talking right now. Let God talk. We can't hear him if we're talking. Recently, I was, uh, we went to the Ark uh, Encounter out in um, Kentucky. And went to the Ark Encounter and then we went to the Creation Museum and as we were going through there, 
my kids said, Daddy, what does this say? It's, it's really awesome. Probably for some of the kids, they were a little too young, just to be honest with you. There's a lot of reading, and it's kind of above some of their heads. We have, uh, there's three, six, seven, and nine years old. So for the younger kids, it's just, it's a little bit too much. So my daughter, Emma, goes, she goes, Daddy, what does this say? So I start to really dumb it down for her, put it on kid level, Sunday school level, like I'm putting it right on her level. And I get like 10 words in, and she goes, what's this? I guess I'm not telling you what it says anymore. I said, that's Braille. She said, what's Braille? I said, Braille is how blind people read. She's like, what does it say? I said, I don't know, don't touch. (laughs) Could you imagine how unnerving that would be? (laughs) Whoa, okay. Um, She couldn't hear what I was saying. She kept interrupting me. Do you want to know or not? Listen, do we really want to know what God has to say or not? You know, us talking too much, that's us thinking that we know everything. Typically, when somebody just talks too much and talks too much and talks too much, it's a sign that maybe they think that they they know everything and so that they have the word that needs to be said all the time. If we would just learn to listen to the omnipotent, omniscient, omnipresent God. Who knows more than him? He's everywhere, knows everything, all-powerful. We should just learn to listen to him. Now, I know everything by prayer and supplication, everything by prayer and supplication. And we are supposed to pray without ceasing. But part of prayer is not just talking. Prayer is listening, too. I mean, if it truly is a conversation, we have to learn to listen, too. How would you know that your prayer is answered if you never listened? Have you ever done this? You're talking to somebody, and while they're talking, you're not really sure what they're saying because you're loading the gun. (laughs) You're trying to think of what to say next. You're just thinking, you're not listening to a word they're saying. Come on, we've all done it, right? We've all, we, we, we are loading up for the next thing that's about to be said. But can I tell you truly, if you want to have a really good conversation, the best way to reply to that person is to listen to everything they just said. Let them talk and say their thing, and then you can answer them. And then you can talk back. A real conversation should not be one-sided. Oftentimes, though, we one-side God. Lord God, would you do this? And Lord God, would you do that? And would you answer this prayer? And do this, and do that, and do this, and do that. And we don't spend enough time actually just listening. Now, if you're listening for God's audible voice, and you hear God's audible voice, you may need some medication. I'm... I kind of am a medical professional, but I'm not here to give, I'm a registered nurse, I'm not here to give any medical advice, I'm just saying, if you're hearing voices, you may need some medicine. Either that was really convicting or not as funny as I thought it would be. (laughs) (laughs) I can't tell. It wasn't as funny, because you guys just laughed just now. All right, I won't tell that joke again. If it's not funny and people don't laugh, it's not funny the second time either. Did you ever see somebody, they stick with the joke and they keep telling the joke? All right, it wasn't funny. So listen, I'm not talking about an audible voice, because you're not going to hear that. That's not going to happen. Okay, but the Lord does impress upon us. The Lord does speak to us through his word, through discernment. And uh, we'll know better what to say if we really just listen to him. Instead of just talking like a chain, I mean just talking and talking and talking and talking and talking and talking. Really, just learn to let God talk. Take a breath. Stop. Often I'll drive down the road and I will not listen to any music, nothing on the radio, and I'm just like, Lord, come on. I read your word today. I prayed. I'm just going to meditate on your word. Speak to me. You've heard the ratio. We have two ears to one mouth. That's the ratio by which we should listen. 
listen twice as much as we're talking. I mean, who knows more than him? Number two, another lesson, not just let God talk, lower the volume. Let's look in our Bibles to 1 Kings. Let's look there. 1 Kings chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19, let's look at verse 8. And he, are you there yet? I still hear pages. I hear pages. It's like the flapping of angel wings. Ah, oh, it's so beautiful to hear people turning in the scriptures. All right, ready? Here we go. First Kings chapter 19, verse 8. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat 40 days and 40 nights under horror of the Mount of God. And he came thither unto a cave and lodged there, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him. And he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thine altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. Can I just interject this? It's not really in my sermon notes, but sometimes we can't hear God because we're just complaining. Now, Elijah's a great guy. <laughs> I mean, he's a Bible hero, right? How many of you love, love the stories of Elijah? I love it. I love it. So listen, if Elijah had a weak moment where he complained a little bit, it can happen to us too. So God kind of puts a time out on him. Hey, hey, listen, go meet me in the cave. I've got something to say to you. Stop all the whining. Stop all the complaining. You know, it'd be good if we don't let ourselves whine too much and complain too much. You guys, you know what I'm talking about. You get up in the morning. You get to that sink and you look at that ugly mug in the mirror. And you're like, I'm tired. And then I look at myself in the mirror. I say, you're tired? You stinking punk. Shave your face, get to work, provide for that family, and stop complaining. Stop whining, stop complaining, and just do what you have to do. <laughs> Waste a lot of time whining, don't we? My kids will talk in whinese. How many of you know that language? <laughs> I don't speak it. My kids will come, Daddy, and I'm like, who are you talking to? I don't know what you just said. Start over, Daddy. Oh, yeah, that's me. What do you need? <laughs> they come and they just start whining. I'm like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not interested in hearing all that. I, I, don't, I don't speak that language. I don't know what you're talking about. Try again. Come back in five minutes when you're ready to stop whining. But we let ourselves whine a lot too. All right, so that's just an interjection. Let's look at verse 10. And he said, he said I have been very jealous Oh, I already read that. Let's look at verse 11. And he said, Go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord, and behold, the Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, a still, small voice. And it was so, when Elijah heard it, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entering in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? You see, the Lord was not, his voice wasn't in the wind. It wasn't in the earthquake, and it wasn't in the fire, but it was in that still, small voice. You know, if we're going to hear the Lord, we're going to have to turn down the volume on everything else. There's so much noise. I can tell when I'm troubled or somebody else is troubled because they just begin to fill their life and their schedule with just noise and noise and noise and noise and noise and they got to be somewhere and go into a party 
and hanging out with friends and going here and going there and going here and going there. Oftentimes, we, don't, we know if things get too quiet, we'll be alone and maybe God will speak to us. We have to learn to turn down the noise of life. Life is pretty busy, isn't it? We're running to and fro. I mean, listen, it'd be okay if every once in a while you stop looking at Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, all of the things that are out there and just kind of be quiet, turn everything down and just say, okay, Lord, go ahead, talk. In Psalm chapter 1, verse 2, the Bible talks about in his law doth he meditate day and night. It's good to be in the word, but it's also good to just say, shh, okay, Lord, I listened and I read. Now I'm listening. And just meditate on it. I'm not talking about like the hippies do. I'm not talking about transcend, uh, what, what is it called? Yeah, transcendental meditation. I'm not talking about anything weird. I'm talking about really honing in on God and listening what he just told you in your Bible reading. I mean, you read it. How many of you, how many of you went on auto mode uh, what do you call it, on uh, cruise control mode, and you read through five chapters of your Bible like a good Christian, and you didn't hear a thing. <laughs> you didn't hear a thing. I mean, you read five chapters of the Bible, and you did not hear a blessed thing. It's dangerous. We do that when we're driving. Have you ever ended up somewhere, and you're like, Waha, what? How did I get here? I don't even remember seeing anything. And I just got home. You're on cruise control. You just get somewhere. We do that with the Lord. We read our Bibles. We're trying to fulfill some duty. We didn't listen to a thing. Folks, we need to slow down, turn off all the volume of life, get away from the kids, get away from the family, get away from all the distraction. I mean, go somewhere where it is dead silence. There's nothing to distract you. And just listen, really listen to God. You know, the Bible talks about there is a way which seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. There are a lot of opinions that you and I have. And please listen to me. Listen to me. I'm as right-wing as conservative as they get. But there's also such a thing as right-wing propaganda. There is. There are people making lots of money by being right-wing news anchors and radio hosts and all this stuff. Folks, you can turn them down sometimes, too. There's a lot of fret and a lot of concern going on because a certain news station, I don't care what you listen to or watch, left, right, it doesn't matter. I don't care if you're a Democrat or Republican. It doesn't matter. We need to turn that junk down every once in a while and listen to God. His opinion is the only thing that really matters, and we'd have a lot less fear if we put our trust in him and we listen to what actually God had to say instead of letting everybody else freak our brains out. I've never seen so much fear in my entire life as right now. Why? Because we're listening to everybody. Letting everybody tell us what to think. I wonder if God's wringing his hands in heaven. I don't wonder. I know he's not. This just in. God's not worried. God is prepared for 2020. He's definitely ready for 2022. And I hope he comes back before then. Amen. But God's not scared. God's not even a little bit trembling. He knows exactly what's going on. He knows that, listen, whether the guy in the White House is the guy you wanted there or not, I can make some assumptions, but that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. God's not scared of that. Amen. And God's still on the throne. He has not been dethroned. And if we just listen to God, I know what he'd say, that's okay, I have a plan in all this. It's all right. Everything's just fine. It doesn't have to go exactly the way. Listen, listen to me. Listen, listen. It's okay. You just keep doing what I told you to do. Amen. Until you get orders for the next thing, you just keep worrying about the same thing you were told to do the last time I talked to you. Amen. You just keep doing that. <clears throat> Things haven't changed too much for us, folks. We have the word of God. It's forever settled, not just in heaven, but right here. We know exactly what our orders are. You know, 
if you lose radio connection in war, you just keep doing the thing you were told to do the last time you were told to do it. Amen. That's it. So I haven't heard from God for a while. <laughs> well, we need to listen. It's there. It's there. We have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. These aren't the silent years, folks. We have him living right inside. He's very ready and willing to speak to us. We need to get in the word. We need to pray. And then we need to actually listen to what he's saying. I mean, pay attention. Really listen and turn down the volume on everything and meditate in his word day and night. You know what's crazy? The volume on my TV in the daytime when my kids are awake, you cannot hear the TV unless the volume on my TV is at least 25. As soon as our kids go to bed, 15 or louder is too loud. Why? Everything's quiet. You don't have to strain to hear anymore. Those crazy kids are in bed. We turn down the volume in our house. And it's funny, when you turn down the volume on the things that are loud in your life, you're going to be able to hear God better. If you want to know God's will on something, just get really quiet. Pray, read your Bible, and just spend some time musing on the things that you, you read and the things that you prayed about. The Lord will speak to you. Nobody wants you to know God's will more than he does. Nobody. Nobody wants you to know it more than he does. Have you ever quit talking to somebody? Have you ever, just in general, have you ever quit talking just because it's too loud? Like you're talking and talking. I can't compete with all this noise. You know, sometimes we really put God through it. We make him compete through all the noise. And we're like, I wish I could hear him. <laughs> He's like, well, then leave the carnival. <laughs> I'm trying to talk here. <laughs> I wish I could hear you. Well, then take the the cotton out of your ears so I can talk to you. It gets tiresome to talk to us when we've got all this noise in our life. And we fill it. We fill our life with all sorts of crazy things. Folks, there's too much. There's just too much in our life. By discipline, in this day and age, brothers and sisters in Christ, in this day and age, we're going to have to, by discipline, just like we have to put down the turkey leg, <laughs> you know, when we're eating too much, the Bible says put a knife to your throat. You know, you're getting too fat. We have to put the turkey leg down. Just like we have to use some discipline to not keep eating and eating and eating and eating and eating, especially in America, man, there's so much food. We're going to, by discipline, have to turn everything down and stop consuming all the stuff of the world. By the way, you can't be filling your life with all the junk of the world and expect to hear God too. Or expect it to be even palatable to you. You know, like, oftentimes we don't want the salad because we're too interested in the Doritos that are in the cabinet. You know, before you go on a diet, what do you got to do? You got to clean out the cabinets. You don't expect to be successful at a diet if you got Doritos and cookies in the cabinet. And you're like, I'm going to eat only salads this week. Sure you are, Tubby. <laughs> sure. Who are you talking to? Me. <laughs> of course you're not going to be successful. You got all that junk in the cabinet, and you and I, we watch all the junk on TV, listen to all the junk on the radio, all the junk on the news, and we're like, I'm going to hear God now. Sure you are. Sure. Okay. <laughs> I like to do that. The fake wink. Nothing is more condescending than that. To the devil. I'm putting down the devil. So I said, number one, let God talk. Number two, lower the volume. And then number three, learn his voice. Do you remember in John, I'm going to turn there, John chapter 10. Let's just put, put our eyes on it for a second. John chapter 10. And we're going to look at verse 27. The Bible says, my sheep hear my voice. And I know them and they follow me. So number three, learn his voice. What does God sound like when he's speaking? Because we already discussed it's not an audible thing. But he does speak. Are you able to discern his voice? I like this. Turn over here in Bibles. This is a true Bible study here tonight. It might be different than the last time I preached here. I don't usually preach here on a Wednesday night. And so I figured, let's do a Bible study, right? So let's look at Matthew chapter uh, 16. Let's look at that. Matthew chapter 16, and then verse 3. 
The Bible here, this is Jesus talking, and he's talking to his disciples. He says, and in the morning, it will be foul weather today, for the sky is red and lowering. O ye hypocrites, ye can discern the face of the sky, but can ye not discern the signs of the times? He said, you know what? You can look out. What is the old adage? Remember, red sky at night, sailors delight. Red sky in the morning, sailors take warning, right? He said, you guys are able to discern the sky, but you can't discern the signs of the times. He's like, is it that hard to figure out? You know, a lot of Christians have a very hard time with discernment and hearing his voice. Well, why is that? Probably, I would say, number one reason we have a hard time hearing his voice, we're not used to it. We're not in the book enough. We're not in the book enough. Uh, other reasons are like we're not learning from past experiences. We're not gleaning from them and discerning. Oh, that was the Lord <laughs> that did that. I mean, pay attention. There's a lot of neat things happening in your life all over. And can I give you a story? You'll love this story. Here's a neat happening. With our, and I didn't talk about this too much because it's kind of a private matter. My wife and I, it took us eight years to have children. Eight years. That was, I hear people talk about having difficulties, having children, and I pray for them because I know what it's like. Uh, but people will talk about, you know, it's been three months and we haven't had children yet. And I think, okay, that's, I'll pray for you. And then uh, six months, we were infertile for six months. And I think, wow, you know. My wife and I, we're just watching people have babies. It was just happening all the time. Everybody's having kids. 16-year-olds having kids. People out of wedlock having kids. I mean, it's just nuts. You're just watching everybody have children. I mean, it was, it was breaking our heart. It was just breaking our heart. And you ask why a lot. We really shouldn't do that. But you do. You ask why. Like, what's going on, Lord? Why? But the Lord knew what he was doing the whole time. And so... Finally, we prayed and we prayed and we prayed and then we did some doctor's visits and we found some things out. Eight years, it was a long time. Found some things out and it turned out we were going to need a little bit of uh, help from modern medicine, from, uh, from some medical experts. Well, we got that. And with our first child, Eva, praise God for, for that, for, the, for modern medicine. Seriously, praise God for it. Our trust wasn't just in that. We prayed a lot even when we were seeing doctors, a whole lot. But we found miracles through all that, and uh, we were part of a, a study in New York City where we got everything pr except for our medicine, which was still like eight grand. We got everything else for free. Would have been, it, this particular doctor would have been like 70 grand for what we got. Well, anyway... When Eva came, everything was like, there was no surprises. Can I just put it that way? There's no surprise. I think some of you will know what that means and some of you won't. Well, whatever. Let's just put it, keep it real simple. There were no surprises. It wasn't like I came home one day and like, here's the tester. I'm with child. Oh, wow, that's so exciting. We knew everything what was happening. We, everything was planned. Okay. So then my wife, she goes all the way full term. Healthy pregnancy, praise the Lord, full term, and then she passes her due date. You know what they gave us, Brother Arlen? They gave us a date where they were going to induce her. No surprises. I mean, I would watch the Dick Van Dyke show. How many of you seen the episode where he's got his hat over his bed and he, he's like, what, huh? Because <laughs> his wife's about to deliver and he jumps out of bed and he's fully closed, right? There was none of that for the first child. None of that. Everything was planned. I mean, planned. Well, same thing with our second child. All the way up until delivery, and I thought, this is crazy. She's probably going to get induced again. I don't know. So I'm in my work truck. was about to deliver some bread. It's 2.30 uh, in the morning. I always prayed before I left. And I would go out and sit in my truck because it was just really quiet. I knew I wasn't going to disturb anybody. I'd sit out there before I'd start my truck. And I'm like, Lord, you know, if... Emma is born, like, in a few more days, it'll be, we'll be at Christmas in the hospital. That wouldn't be any, any fun. Uh, I guess it would be okay as long as she's healthy, but Lord, could you have her come today? So I pray for that, and we go to, I go deliver my bread all day, and I was telling people, I prayed for the baby to be born today, and they're like, okay, weirdo, what does that mean? <laughs> you prayed for the baby to be born today? And uh, so I, I, I prayed, I was praying all day, telling everybody, I think the Lord's going to do it. Man, I went all day working, came home, took a nap, 
because that's what happens when you work third shift like that. Took a nap, got up, I went soul winning with my friend Kenny. We got stuck at this crazy guy's house for like an hour. It was nuts. I got home at like 9.30, near, near 10, 10 o'clock by the time I get in the door because I talked to Kenny. And uh, we, we get in the house and I said, hi, hon, it's, it's, you know, it's 10 o'clock. How you feeling? And I'm just feeling her out. I didn't want to put too much stress on her. How you feeling? And she said, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I'm like, oh, what do you mean you're good? Your water didn't break. You're not in any pain, anything like that. Lord, hello, come on. And so, um, well, nothing seemed like it was happening. She goes, I'm going uh, to put Eva to bed. She comes out. She goes, I just had two pretty strong contractions, like pretty strong. She said, like, I'm going to call the doctor. <laughs> so she calls the doctor, and the doctor says, well, just hang, hang tight and uh, something like that. I actually don't remember all this part of the story. So then she gets another contraction. And she's like, forget the doctor. That was a real one. That, this, is, this is, I've never felt anything like this before. We're going to the hospital. This baby is coming. I had this list in the kitchen, on the kitchen counter, of stuff that I was supposed to do. On the list, number one was get the go bag. And I'm like, yeah, Lord, this is awesome. You're doing it. You're doing it. It's like, it's, it's almost 11 o'clock. And the Lord is like, he's doing it. The baby's coming, right? I got this list. Start the car, get the go bag. I start the car, the trunk is open to come back in to get the go bag, and my wife is screaming. Screaming. And she's standing there, I'm like, what's her problem? And she's like, the baby's coming. I'm scanning, let me see. There's children in her room. She's delivering the baby. Can I just say, the baby is coming? The baby is coming. And within just, I called 911, and he's like, what do you see? I'm like, I have no idea what I'm looking at. And he's like, she's having a baby, sir. Uh, just get her to lay down. I said, lay down. She jumps in the tub, because she don't want to make everything a mess. And uh, she jumps in the tub. And can I tell you, 911, like this? And before I got the go bag in the car, <laughs> that baby was in my hand, like this. Now, can I tell you, I didn't order that. I was like, Lord, I just wanted the baby to come today. He's like, yeah, but you asked for a surprise. You said everything was getting boring. We know when she conceived. We know when she's induced. And you wanted a surprise? You got him. Like, yeah, but I didn't order that. But can I tell you what? I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. I wouldn't trade that for anything in the world. You know what? I learned to listen to when God's talking. It's not always how we expect things to be. It's not. We have to use, listen, there's, there's a discernment. We can discern. We act like we're so discerned. Ah, I've seen this before. Oh, I've seen this before. I know how this is going to go down. Do you know how it's going to go down with God? He is the God of miracles. He is the God who speaks with us. He is the God who daily loads us with benefits. So why are we poor mouthing all the time? Like we think that things are always going to go bad. Aren't we able to discern for what's happened before? Haven't you been listening? God's in all of these things. We need to learn how to discern him. I'm going to turn my Bible over to uh, Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14. Let's look at that real quick. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 14, the Bible says, But strong meat belongeth to them that are of full age. What's that talking about? Maturity. Maturity. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. The Bible says, look, You've exercised your senses, and now guess what? You're a little bit mature, and now you're able to discern both good and evil. Discernment comes with spiritual maturity. It's time that some of us grow up and really learn what the Lord's voice sounds like, really discern when he's working in our life, really discern when he is speaking to us. We've got to, listen, we've got to let him talk. We've got to turn down the volume, and we've got to learn God's voice and learn when he's speaking to us and learn what he sounds like. Sometimes he's trying to get our attention. You know, we often say about, uh, I've heard that wisdom is seeing things through the eyes of God. Wisdom is also hearing things the way God would hear them and hearing what he has to say. So many times God's trying to speak to us, but we're not getting it. Sometimes I'll say to my kids, some of you will get this, Hello, McFly! <laughs> hey, pay attention! I'm talking to you! 
Oh, man, I don't want God to have to grab my attention. I don't want him. Listen, folks, I want to stay tuned in. I don't want him to have to grab my attention. You know, sometimes, you ever been listening to the radio and all of a sudden you hear that alarm and it's, it's an alert from the emergency broadcast system? I don't want one of those messages from God. I want to stay tuned in on him. I want to pay attention to God. You know, sometimes a failure, what we perceive as a failure, is something we've been asking for or an obstacle to a small success that we're asking for is a roadblock that God's removing so we can have a bigger success. You know, we'll ask things from God, please work in my life and do this. And God's like, I'll work in your life, but that is not my will. I will. I will work in your life. And we're so focused on the thing that we asked for that when it comes to his will, we're like, God, please work in my life. Please work in my life. Please work in my life by letting me win the lottery. <laughs> and the Lord's like, I'll work in your life. But you're not winning the lottery, but I am working in your life. Would you listen? I'm saying stuff. I am working. You just don't want me to work this way in your life. We have to learn to listen to his voice. It's often maybe not what we want to hear. We may be getting an answer to prayer, but it's not exactly. We don't recognize it because we're not listening for his voice and the way he, <laughs> he talks. You know, if we get used to God and his word, we kind of pick up on what he's saying. Like, oh, okay, yeah, of course he wouldn't want that. All right, number four, let me say this. I said number one. Uh, what did I say, number one? I did have it just a second ago. So I said number one. Let God talk. Number two, lower the volume on everything else. Number three, learn his voice. Number four, let the answer go if the answer is no. Sometimes the answer is no. Sometimes the answer is no. God told us to ask, seek, and knock. You know, we're supposed to try doors, not pry them. Our job is not to bust down doors God doesn't want us to go through but we should ask, seek, and knock. Try that door. Oh, that's not it. That's not it. Now, you'll never get to the door that's right if you don't knock. So it is important to pray. But sometimes he says no. We have to try the doors. You know, the Bible tells us, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither entered into the heart of men the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. There's a lot of really great things that God has for us. You may not have ever heard of it before, because the Bible says, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither entered in the heart of man. I'm glad, because God's imagination is way better than mine could ever be. The things that God could ever think of, the Bible says his ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts. He tells us, the Bible tells us that his ways transcend our ways. Amen. I am so glad he has a perfect will. I'm so glad he says no to the things that I've asked for sometimes. I'm glad. You've never heard a voice like his before. It's totally unique. It's totally different. Learn to listen. Let me give you an example of how unique and different things are. Every religion in the world will tell you, if you want to go to heaven, you must be good. You got to be a good person. Good people go to heaven. Good people reach a higher uh, meditation level, all that stuff. If you treat Mother Nature good, Mother Nature will treat you good back. The Bible tells us something different. The Bible tells us there is none righteous. No, not one. You know what's so unique about the Bible, Bible Christianity? I know man would not have created this religion because Jesus Christ died for sinners. Not because we're worthy or we deserve anything. It's totally unique. And I get, you know, I thank God. I say, God, I thank you that you're a merciful God and you're a gracious God. I guess you didn't have to be this way, but you are. It's who you are. Thank you for being merciful and gracious to me and saving me a sinner. It's totally unique than anything out there. Folks, listen to me. If your salvation is more unique than anything out there in the world, anything man has ever thought up, if, that's, if his will for salvation for you is unique, can you imagine all the other things that he has for you? He has a will for your life. Learn to listen to God. Heavenly Father, I do thank you for this day. Lord, I thank you for your word. Lord, I hope that we were listening tonight. Lord, I want to hear you. I want to let you talk.
I want to learn your voice. I want to lower the volume. And I want to let it go if the answer is no, Lord. Would you please work here in our midst tonight, please? With every head bowed and every eye closed, a simple invitation tonight. How many of you would say tonight, Brother Sharif, I know without a shadow of a doubt, I know that I know that I know that I'm saved. I know that I am. I'm born again. I've trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior. There's no doubt. And I'm going to ask you to be honest. Don't lie in church, okay? If you can be honest anywhere, I hope that it's in church. You say, I know that I am saved. I know without a shadow of a doubt. Would you raise your hand up high? You say, that's me. I know I'm saved. I see those hands. Would you put those down, please? Across the room, there's just a couple who did not raise their hand, and maybe a couple with just some hesitancy. And let me just talk to you for just a second. God wants you to know that you're on your way to heaven. He wants you to know. The Bible says, These things have I written unto you, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. He wants you to know it. Know it, know it, know it. How many of you here say, I do not know for sure I'm on my way to heaven, but I'd like to. I've messed around a lot. I've heard this before. But tonight, I'm truly going to put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ for salvation. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says we're all sinners. There is none righteous, no, not one. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We're all sinners and we come short of heaven. We do not measure up. If you're trying to get there on your own, you will never do it. But God commendeth his love toward us. And that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. If you didn't raise your hand just a moment ago, but you're willing to raise your hand tonight and say, I would like to trust Jesus Christ as my Savior. No more playing around. No more games. Tonight, I want to trust Jesus Christ as my Savior. Would you raise your hand up high? Say, that's me. I'd like to trust Jesus Christ as my Savior. I see that hand right there. I see that. God bless you, sis. Is there anyone else? Say, that's me. I'd like to trust Jesus Christ as my Savior. Anyone else? We had one here tonight. Now, everybody in the room, your eyes are closed except for that one person who raised their hand. Just look right at me. Go ahead, look right at me. Don't be, nobody's looking. Go ahead, I saw the hand. You can look at me. If you meant that, just go ahead and... Uh, I'm going to have you talk to Mrs. Cuzo, okay? Would you just go ahead and talk to her real quick? Would you do that? Just go ahead and step out of your seat and talk to her. Would you do that? Okay. I'll talk to you in a minute, okay? With every head bowed and every eye closed, how many say, I want, to, I want to learn how to listen to God? I want to learn how to hear his voice. I want to, I want to turn down the volume. I want to let him talk. And if the answer is no, I'm going to let it go, but I want to hear his voice. That's me. Would you say that's me, Brother Sharif? I want to listen to God. I see those hands. All over the room, I see those hands. God bless you. Heavenly Father, you've seen the hands here this evening. I pray that you bless us as we enter in this invitation time. Would you bless this invitation? In Jesus' name, amen. With every head bowed and every eye closed, let's all stand to our feet at this time. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Listen, let's just do this. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's come on down to an old-fashioned altar. Let's grab the ear of God right now. Let's just talk to him and say, God, would you hear me? And then, Lord, would you talk to me? Grab his ear, talk to him, and then let him talk back to you. As the piano player's playing, would you join me at an old-fashioned altar? Let's let the Lord talk to us tonight. Come on down to an old-fashioned altar.